Hi everyone, this is Joe Rebello, known on the internet in the martial arts world as Kenpo Joe. Welcome to Kenpo Explosive Striking and also One-Handed Kenpo. Uh, in today's class, we've got a 40-minute segment where we're going to go over various Kenpo systems and the importance of one-handed techniques utilizing Kenpo. So the first technique we're going to focus on today, Ed Parker did a wonderful seminar and he talked about the four-point formula. I've got a wonderful gentleman here, Tim Hollywood. Tim's going to help me out. And Tim, all you're going to do is uh, like give us a white roundhouse punch. So Mr. Parker will talk about... H U R T, where you make your opponent hurt. And how do you hurt them? By putting them in again. P A I N. Now, what are we doing here? We're hurting a person, we're putting them in pain. But notice the important elements is one handed tempo. What does that mean? It means tempo is identified with a predominant amount of strikes being done with one hand. So again, the other hand is used either to check block, guard, or pin. So, in this particular technique, when Tim throws a punch, I block, this hand is in a guard position. From my inward block with the same hand, I do an outward hand sword. From there, I utilize a collapsing elbow. I keep my hand here, and I fold in. I'm gonna get you, Tim, get in. He's like, he wants to block his face. And I use what's called a sandwiching elbow. A sandwiching elbow. Right, we uh, if we do many traditional katas, we see the sandwiching elbow. Ed Parker had a great phrase. Tim, he used to say, if you use a brace, it keeps his face from flying off into space. So again, that's the basic concept. So let's face the camera for a minute. Let's do it together, Tim. Again, I always recommend that we do the technique in the air and then with each other. Now, the questions people ask me, do I step back or do I step forward? Yes. Meaning it depends on your environment. If I have the space to step back and execute my inward block, and then I do an outward hand sword, anchoring my elbow to the side of the neck, and then I'm going to use a shuffling foot maneuver, a step drag, I'm going to step drag, sandwiching elbow. Yay! And then I'm going to drop down and utilize a cross or uh, a rolling hammer fist into the groin from that point. So again, step back, a little, step back, a little, step back, and we're going to block Tim. One, two, three, and four. Now, notice that at that point I didn't shuffle. When do you shuffle in the course of a given Kempo technique? Simply say to Tim, when you have to. That's the key. It's all depending on the distance between you and your opponent. So once again, we'll do this technique and H, U, R, T. And we're gonna put our opponent in. A, I, N. Very good. So now, Tim, when I work with you, and we can probably simple power respect those side kicks and the camera, and I'm gonna throw a right roundhouse punch. So I throw the right roundhouse punch, he steps in, pow, and he blocks. Now notice he grabbed in that instance. It still makes it a one-hand camera technique, like we told you before, to block, to check, to guard, to pin, or grab, like the fingers of the hand. So he can grab that arm if he wants to, and then knife hand to the side of the neck, and then right from there, his, we leave the hand here. Because now I'm going to shuffle up and collapse the sandwiching elbow. Boom. Pow! And then drop it down here because it's right. Boom! P-A-I-N-H-U-R-T. Are you hurt from the pain? I certainly am. He does the technique to me. Let's go on. Let's pick another example. Uh, another example we're talking about, we're talking about technique five series. And uh, we're going to go into that because I'm about alternating. Very important ingredient tempo. But we'll pick another one-handed technique. In this case, we're going to pick one called triggered salute. And this is used against the front right hand direct push. Now, in this case, we like to go Tim, front up. Now, you notice Tim turned face the camera. You'll see he has this wonderful crest, like the samurai moon in ancient Japan. Well, a lot of times, maybe one samurai who maybe was a, uh, a ronin, a wave-tossed man that his school or a daimyo was killed and his clan was destroyed. And when he sees a particular clan that destroyed his family, he never wants to see it again. He puts his hand over it. I don't want to see that. So that's the base attack. So now Tim's going to take his right hand and he's going to cover my mon, my crest, and he steps in. Now, again, here's an important ingredient. Orange belt techniques in American Kempo. Tim, did you know that over half of the techniques for orange belt all step forward? Because guess what? Where are we? Well, in the case of Triggered Salute and other techniques like it, orange belt. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm against the wall. When Tim comes up and pushes me, well, guess what? I can't step back, now can I? But I can step forward. I can invade his personal space. 
So the key ingredient, I don't step two people, I step through people. So again, let's move over back here over the temple. So let's watch the footwork associated with this. As he executes his front right hand push, we say a wonderful phrase, whatever the attitude, so is the response. We quote that great master of martial arts, Dr. Dooley, who meets that double-sided llama, the push me, pull you. So as he goes to push me, I respond by stepping in on a 45 degree angle, buckling his leg diagonally with a heel pop. I then slide my hand down his arm, buckling his elbow, and anchor his elbow like so. I then chamber my hand and execute an inward elbow from that point. Bring my hand across, outward elbow. We say where circular moves end, linear moves begin. And where linear moves end, I use a raking back knuckle to pick him back up and arc his body, and then strike him with an uppercut in the chin. Now, the beauty of this, Tim, we're going to do it together, let's face the camera. So again, we're talking about techniques called triggered salute. My opponent's salute triggers my salute. So again, from a natural stance, I'm going to pin. I'm going to step forward with my left foot to 11 o'clock. Not 12, to 11, because I want to buckle his right leg with a heel pump. So this is one. Then I want to form the shape of the crane. Mr. Parker would also use a hammer fist as well. I want to turn, hook, and chamber. That's going to buckle my opponent's arm and pull him so he can't hit me with the other hand. Now, right from there, I'm going to do an inward elbow to the floating ribs. I'm going to bring my hand. I'm going to sandwich, but I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to keep that pin. Keep that pin right there. And then I'm going to come out, outward elbow to the floating rib cage. And then I'm going to do a raking back. That's going to come out. My wrist is going to flex to catch and contour to the kidney and grip back with a foot raking back and then finish with an uppercut. So, put your hand here, hand down, and one, heel palm, two, shape of crane hook, three, inward elbow, four, outward elbow, five, breaking back knuckle chamber, and six, uppercut. Now, we talk a lot in Kempo in recent years of category completion, Tim, and it's important for you people, oh, well, Matt Parker never talked about category completion, I go, not that phrase, but what he did say is the following. For every move, theory, concept, principle, and definition, there is an opposite and a reverse. Look at the old arts that you've studied. Again, you train with Rico Guy and other individuals, and you look at Gold Kempo from uh, your, your system. And uh, again, Gold Kempo, Go means not, not Go Go, it's more like Go Hard, like Goku, you know, if, you're, if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan. So again, the key ingredient here is that when we do this, we have movements that move forward on a horizontal plane. We end with a closed hand, which is the opposite of open, that moves up on a vertical or diagonal plane. We do a circular motion in with our elbow, and then we do a linear motion out. The opposite of in is out. The opposite of circular is linear. And once we have that linear motion, we then go into a circular motion, hitting with the back of our knuckles, and also raking in a hooking fashion. So we have all this going on in the course of this one technique. So let's have you demonstrated a couple of times on me. So I go to push and pin my hand, natural, natural stance. You know? The I don't know karate stance. Officer, I was just standing here. So again, I go to push and you pin, you step right in, right through my neck. I feel your knee touch my knee. Yeah, there you go. And I'll hook my arm and buckle it. Slide your hand down and chamber it all the way back. Right, so it pulls me there. That pulls me off balance and shuts off this hand. Then, inward elbow, good. Outward elbow, bang. Back knuckle, right, boom. And make sure you hit my kidney. Hit the kidney, right? And then uppercut, pop. And the other hand stays in that pitting position. Again, making it a one-handed tempo technique. Hey, Tim, let's turn around. Sure. Come on over here. Come on this way. So you can see my lovely face and watch me get smacked around a little bit. All right, so again, so I go to push Timmy Pins. He steps right in. Ah, you cheated. You step back. Remember? Now you got no way to step back because your back is to a one. A wall. wall. Environment dictates your action. So I pin, you step right in. Good. Long, long, long. Chamber to the wind. There you go. Good, good. Outward, back over right. Ah, and up. And there you have it. Now, the beauty of this, and we're going to demonstrate. Come on over here. Let's switch it for both. Switch over. So now, here's the beauty of this. We have what's called sequential flow tip. And here's the key one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Did you blow your mind for a moment? All right, we'll slow it down a little bit. So the beauty of this is once I did that initial heel pop, I hooked with the shape of the crane, I did my inward elbow, I did my outward elbow, I did my raking back knuckle, and did the uppercut. Now watch, right from here, I'm gonna go back to two. Shape of the crane, hook, chamber, 
Inward elbow three, outward elbow four, raking back knuckle five, uppercut six, shake the crane two, three, four, five, six. And that's the key. So now, to quote that great Canadian pro wrestler, Chris Jericho, I can do it over and over again and again as many times as I want to. And that's the beauty of the sequential flow associated with that. Now, uh, I'm going to pick another system. I'm going to go one, 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 one more one-handed technique, and then we'll go on to alternate and talk about my swords. And that's from a complete different Kempo system known as Shaolin Kempo, and it's based originally on another art founded by uh, Sijo uh, Hideon. Most people knew him as Victor Sonny Gascon, and that art is Kana Zempo Goshen Jutsu. Kata for China, Zen for enlightened philosophy, Po for law, and then Goshen Jutsu for art of self-defense. The technique we're going to pick today, Tim, is called combination number two. Uh, Cedro Gascon used numbered combinations for his techniques to make it easier for the students to remember them. And I'll demonstrate the technique first in the air. Um, I'll have to step off for a moment and then we'll work on it together. So, in this case, the person's executing a front right step through straight punch. The classic karate punch. I'm going to move back so you can see my entire body. So I'm going to do what's called right foot out on elbows. Bow, step out. Are you? Now, I'm going to do a block step. We base it on Shaolin understanding of the blocks. So again, I'm going to step to the corner of the box and be parallel to the punch as I execute an inward block. I then going to bring my hand back on the center line and execute a back two knuckle, also known as a vertical uh, back knuckle thrust. Now, right from here, I'm going to execute a step drag. Step with my front foot, drag with my back foot, execute an outward elbow to my opponent's solar plexus. From here, Tim, I'm going to bring my arm around in a circular fashion. I'm going to hook the person's feet, take them down to the ground, and roll my hands to the inside of the ball and leg. And then I'm going to step there with my left foot and drive the person's knees apart. I'm going to shuffle back a little bit so you get a clear view of this. So again, the person's falling back, their legs are spread, and then I execute a sliding check to their groin and bring it back. At that point, I step back to a 45 degree angle, and I cross and cover up. So again, we're showing the one-handed use of Kempo. So from a side view, parallel step, inward block, back to knuckle, step drag elbow, Circle, hook the knee, take the opponent down, step in on a 45, sliding chop to the groin, step back on a 45 degree angle, and cross and cover up. Combination two. So, Tim, what we're just going to do, we're just going to do the upper body hand action just to get accustomed to the place. Come on over. So, again, what we're going to do, we're going to step out with our right foot to our horse and skip it up. Now we're going to step to the corner of the box and slide our other foot back so we're parallel to the punch. So we'll step to the corner, parallel, and we're going to do an inward block. I'm going to shuffle up a little bit forward here. And right from there, I'm going to bring my hand back to position, do a back two knuckle strike. I'm then going to step drag forward, shuffle in, outward elbow directly to the solar plexus. Then I'm going to circle my hand. Now some people compound this with a rake to the face, like a claw to face to pull the opponent's body back. Circling around, hooking the ankle, bringing it around, and checking to the inside of the person's leg at the ankle. I'm going to step in with my left foot, and I know you can't see it, I'm going to back up a little bit here so you get more. So my two knees in my horse stance actually spreading my opponent's legs apart. I then execute a chop to the groin and slide it back to the point at the knee, step back on a 45 degree angle, and cross and cover up. Twist stance, twist stance. The classic phrase from a 1960s poster I remember, do onto others <laughs> that split. And that's the key. So let's try it again. Let's go. Oh, my horse stands facing this way. So combination number two. Parallel step, inward block, back to knuckle or uppercut, step drag, dipping elbow, striking the solar plexus, circle, you can rake the face, the circle over the person's head, take the person's ankle down, Step in, check them off, and then whack, sliding chop. Step back on a 45 degree angle, getting away, and cross and cover up. We split. Get the idea? Yes. Okay. So let's work on the basic idea. Take the time with the action. Remember, we're in a seminar atmosphere, so speed is not important. It is important, however, your ability to understand and grasp the basic concepts. So, 
Now here's the kicker. You would think like the previous action is against the step rule, classical karate punch. No. Originally in Kata Zempo, long before the advent of Shaolin Kempo, it was talked that it's the boxer's punch. There's a left jab, a straight right, a left hook, a right uppercut, overhand right. These were the tools that many of the martial artists of that time frame would have to deal with in practical self-defense against an attacker who is skilled in boxing. Boxers don't step through. They stay in a left lead. That's their weapon. So when you shoot a straight right, right, if I'm facing you, Tim, I shoot a box to the right, I don't step in. That groin is wide open. So that's what's happening here with combination number two. So again, I'll give my fighting stance and the worst stance out, right? That's a classical placement. Just a point of reference, that's all. Classical. Okay? So all you do here is parallel step, and step in the inside, and there's a punch. There's a punch here. No, probably beats first. There you go. Remember that from uh, um, uh, the old uh, cartoon with Bullwinkle, right? Peabody and Sherman. So you can step to the corner here with your left foot, and right foot will parallel. Move. Cool. Uh, still going to the outside and see the inside. Punch me. Punch me. Oh, no, not a karate punch, a boxing punch. All right? So now, you fire in. Now, I don't want a left jab, I want a straight right. That's what I want for Christmas. All right. So you fire that. Wow, that'd be bad. This would be worse. That would suck. And I hook and leg, bang. Now feel how all the weight was taken off your leg by the series of strikes. Later on, it threw people off to try to have boxing elements, so they just did the karate punch. So the problem was, they left the majority of weight on the leg, they were trying to sweep it, they'd have a tough time trying to sweep this leg. When we see it from a boxing perspective, it's a lot easier to take that leg out, isn't it? So again, you're in the boxing stance, your hands are up, you shoot a straight right, you go. Well, boom, I slipped the punch. I'm moving here to the corner, I'm slipping the punch, and then parallel. I do my inward block, my back to knuckle lifts his head up, Boom! Iron spike to his sternum, I sweep around, take his leg down, and then chop him in the groin. Try it again? Let's switch it. So, I'm going to shoot the boxer's right hand punch, horse stance facing me. So you're going to take this foot, and you're going to step to that corner, and you're going to slide that foot back, so you're parallel to the inside of the right foot. Gotcha. Okay. And here we go. Boom. Step. One, two. Now punch now right from there. Is that a rolling back knuckle? No. Because if you hit me, if you hit me in this fashion down, then my body folds down and you don't get that next shot. What you want to do from here is you want to pick me up. See how I'm off weight? See how I'm the piece of bread? Boom! That's gonna take me right out. Just those three moves, right? Sweep right out the leg from there. So just this concept of block in, back to the outward elbow is dynamic. It's dynamic, it's supposed to. Professor Chow, Professor William Fison Chow, once said, if you hit the guy three times and nothing happens, you're doing something wrong. Kempo is based on the power of three. And here's another shiny example where we see the power of three. Exactly. Try that again. Ready? So block, punch, elbow. Good. Again. Block, uppercut, elbow. Not, not, dip it out. So it comes out horizontal. Like the letter L. Stuff out would call that a dipping elbow because it dips down and out. So block in, punch up, dip down and out. Exactly. Very good. Now, get the idea on that? Okay, so those are the three techniques that we're showing you uh, based on one-handed Kempo. There are many techniques. For those who do kind of simple Goshen Jutsu, if you do three combination, punch the groin, check, back knuckle. If you have the extension, we reach across and take the guy to the ground and punch him. But again, we'll talk about that one-handed action. If I work on another technique called combination four from kind of simple, I block up, I sweep, I rake across the face, I roundhouse kick the guy and work it from there. Again, these are all one-handed techniques, and that's what identifies Kempo as Kempo. So Tim, you were asking a question regarding technique, and now we're going to go into another important ingredient of Kempo, alternating hand strikes. Now again, that means in the course of, te of the actions, we are alternating from one side to the other. So let's talk about five suits. So, uh, what is your question? Your question is, I just want to go over the technique. I want to go over the technique. Sure. Uh, form is correct. Sure. The technique to execute correct. Sure. So, um, many years ago, I interviewed the famous uh, Jiu Jitsu Grandmaster Professor B, Lorendo Visitation. And I was talking to him and I mentioned I did Kempo, and he goes, Oh, Kempo, Ed Parker's Kempo. Oh, I love Ed Parker's Kempo. So, years later, ESPY would do a series of videos where uh, Grandmaster uh, Professor B and uh, David James. And the first time that Professor B comes up and he goes to demonstrate a technique, what technique does he demonstrate? Five swords. 
I was like, wow, I, you, you can't say you love Ed Parker's Campo any more than that. So let's go over Five Swords. So Five Swords, again, is a classic Ed Parker Campo. Ed Parker Campo, Tracy Campo, Tom Connor Campo, all down that line of lineage goes over Five Swords. So, and then later on, Five Swords and Tracy System, Seven Swords, uh, also close fist version called Four Fist in the Tracy System. But let's talk about it. So again, um, we talk about orange belt, we said half of the techniques are against the wall. Another important feature is there are specific techniques for all the major boxing attacks, which are, as we talked about earlier, left jab, straight right, left hook, right uppercut, and also right roundhouse, the haymaker. And that's what, the, that's what basically it's against. It's against the haymaker. The guy who steps in with his right foot and puts it all in and not into the next zip gun. So, um, there are, uh, there's a two-hand version, there's a one-hand version. Like we talked about, like a one-handed version, one hand comes in the check. But also, we have a series of two-handed actions. So, again, we're back is to a wall, so we can't step back. So I'm going to step in and I'm going to execute this several different variations on the double-handed block. And again, yet another example of what makes it Kempo. When utilizing both hands simultaneously, that is a prevalent theme in the art of Kempo. And we have several variations that we can do too. So let, let, let's play with the toy a little bit, right? So the first one we can do is close fist open hand. Okay, step back up. And we're going to block out without close fist, block it, chop it, little hand. One. And back. And one. Now one more time. One. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open our back hand. So now it's going to be a double knife hand. So we're going to step in, double knife. One. And back. One. And back. One. And back, we're good. Now, the opposite of close is open. The opposite of open is close. So now, now I'm gonna do a shuto, right? Knife hand block and a hammer fist. I'm gonna take the bicep. I'm gonna blow out the water balloon. I'm gonna pop the water balloon, burst it. I want to take the vein that lays horizontally across the bicep. I want it to explode. I want to create a hematoma. I want to burst the water balloon. I want his arm to drop like a bad habit. So again, now we're gonna knife hand with our backhand, hammer with our front. So knife and hammer. Right. Hey, you know I work with a good friend of mine, Michael Pacina, and he had a Gordon Dovasilas Okinawa Te Te Kempo Jiu Jitsu. And one of the main forms that you are taught in the system is a sword technique, and also a Kempo technique from Mr. Parker's system, which is named sword and hammer. So here we are with our sword and hammer. Sword and hammer, pow, and back. Sword and hammer. Pow, and back. Once more, so hammer. Pow, and back. Now, of course, the final one we can do is double hammers. What separates Kempo from Koi? Well, one of the things is the use of the hammer fist. If we're using a predominant amount of hammer fist, whether offensively or defensively, guess what? You're doing Kempo. If you have Kempo techniques like uh, thundering hammers, where I block in, reverse hammer fist roll, hammer fist, hammer fist, guess what? I'm using the hammer fist. If I'm doing that aforementioned Kempo technique I talked about earlier, Tim, let's work on this for a second. Right foot steps out, sword and hand to the throat, hammer to the ground. Real simple, right? Called sword hammer. The guy grabs your shoulder, you pin him with your left hand, step out the horse, sword, whack, uh, hammer, boom. So the hammer. So the hammer fist is an important natural weapon used in the art of Kempo. And it's kind of just to identify what we do with so now let's go on with five swords. So let's do a hammer and sword. So you step in, block and chop. Chop out the side of the neck. I'm gonna heel palm him in the face like I did earlier with the trigger salute. I'm gonna come in with an uppercut action and neutral bow. Now I'm gonna move off the line of attack because the guy's gonna throw up on me because I just made I just made him up chop. So I move his head out of the way, make him vomit, cock my hand up, and I step out with my with back foot. And then I pivot in, boom, and I chop. I worked uh, with Mr. Parker, one of the things he did to me uh, at the seminar, he hit me with a knife and he almost knocked my contact lenses out of my eyes. And I was like, Mr. Parker, I couldn't help but notice, you know, how do you do a hand sword? Kind of, huh? No, Mr. Parker, how do you do a hand sword? You know, my thought, oh, you noticed that? Oh, yeah, I could have missed that one. So what he would do, he would allow his hand to drop. Now, in Sun Style Kung Fu, we have what's called the, the crane technique. And they actually used the word. And someone said, yeah, what's this weird key I do? It's hawk. I said, it's crane. What? It's the name of the technique. That's what the bird actually says. Hoop, hoop. So that hooking action and the crane beak. And that. So, but now when we chop, we allow the wrist to contour. Right. So see that? See right there? See right there? Don't move. See how it contours the back of my neck? That's the key. 
years later, I would work with uh, James Moreau from uh, uh, Lua, and he would talk about you know this being a, a Lua basic, the relaxing and flicking. And it's interesting. Elvis Presley was doing a martial arts demonstration. Every time he finished a technique, he do the go boom, and he go to wherever toast me again. Every time, boom, and always the Elvis hand sword to relax the wrist, to let allow it to contour to the target. So let's go over this again, Tim. From a natural stance, I'm going to step in with a right foot. I'm going to block and chop. One. Then I'm going to chop to the side of the neck. Two. Then I'm going to pivot to a forward bow, locking my back foot a good zinkutsu dash. Forward stance, heel palm, and I cock this right hand back. Why? Because I've checked off my, at least two of my opponent's three dimensions, so he can't retaliate. I then pivot back to a neutral bow, uppercut him, and this hand acts as a rebounding motion. Now again, I punch him in the, in the gut, he's going to stop puking, so I move his head out of the way. I slap it out of the way as I cock the weapon up, stepping with your back foot. See? Nothing to We're going to step with our front, back foot. And then I'm going to pull his head down, chop him in the back. And again, that contouring knife in Up. Let's try it back up a little bit. Let's try that again. So this is five swords. Now again, you and your particular Kempo orientation might have a, a variation on this. And it's perfectly understandable. But if you, me, and ten other Kempo people watch somebody do that technique, we all go, well, what is it with five swords? Yeah, but I do a little bit different. Did you recognize it as five swords? Yeah, cool. Then another way to look at it. All right, here we go. Five swords used against a front right roundhouse punch. And one, walk and chop. Two, chop out. Three, forward bow heel pump. Four, uppercut to the body. Five, step back off the line, move his head out of the way, they can puke on the ground, and chop him back in the head. Six. And there you are. Five, so let's play a little bit with that. The natural stance. So again, remember your back's four walls, and so you step back, you step in. You invade personal space. So I throw, you tell me when to move. One. You see, it's it it long, all right? You're simply trying to grab, and that's a jujitsu perspective. We always want to reach out and grab somebody. Kempo jujitsu, right? We want to go from our Kempo into our jujitsu. So block and chop for now. Try it again. Ready? And one, block with the chop. Now block with the chop. Chop side of the neck, right from there. Ah. Now don't lift your elbow. Anchor your elbow. Right. Now pick the forward bow, heel pop No! Now uppercut. Boom! <laughs> that hand here, right across here. This is a checking action. Why? Because once he punches me there, you, if I start to throw off, he wants to move my head out of the way by you palming me. As he hooks it back up, you let go, you let go. That's what you do. Pull the head down. And again, this is new for Tim. You pull your head down, and then you chop, rocking the other weapon high, and chop. Boom. And that's the key. Up. Now realize for Tim it's a new technique, it's a new experience, but you have as long as you have fun with that's the most important thing. Alright, so now uh, step back with your right foot, execute a right roundhouse punch. So again, move. So I bathe the space, step right and walk and chop. So you have any buckles from that motion? Then I chop off the side of that anchor to my elbow. Now if he turns my head, I'm gonna rupture his eardrum. Preferably he still wants to look at me, so I'm gonna lift his head up, and this way he never sees the back. And that's the key. Your opponent should say at the end of a fight what a person does Kempo. I never saw what hit me. Or I have to look at somebody else and go, what do you hit me with? And that's one of the keystones of what makes Kempo Kempo. So I'm going to do this uppercut. I'm going to move his head out of the way, pull his head down, and draw to the top. Let him look at his own pewter. <laughs> Just kidding. But actually, I'm not, because actually that was one of the aspects that we talked about when we learned Five Swords. So there you go. Let's try it again. Step one. So again, we're going to step in, block with a chop. One, we'll face the camera. I'm going to chop out with an anchor or elbow, right? You don't see people do this in karate kata, right? They do this, anchor your elbow, right? Shuto uke. So here's my knife hand. I pick a forward bow, heel palm, I dries his head back, and I pivot back to neutral bow, boom, uppercut, and then I let it rebound like a basketball off my, my bicep, lift the arm up, lift his head out of the way, all the hand, move that head out of the way with your left hand, pull it out, and then drop and chop. Whack! And there you have it. Five swords. People say, but I don't see five swords. Yeah, that's because originally it used to be one, two, three, four, five. That's why it was originally called five swords. But again, Professor Chow had like hands of stone. To see that man with his closed fist, it looked like ball bearings under flesh. And his fingers, he would drive it in the old traditional ways in sand and ball bearings and rocks. And when he hit you with a spear hand, he just like ripped open your flesh. So, you know, but not all of us have that time and dedication to do due diligence for iron hand techniques. And that's the key. 
So uh, there you have it, five swords. Tim, thank you so much. And again, see, now see what happened? He got not only a private lesson, but he got an exclusive private lesson for YouTube. And I hope that you got something out of this, and I hope that you come down for the action martial arts mega weekend here at the Tropicana in Atlantic City. And again, we're here on Friday. It's kind of a slow day. It's not so, it's still a lot of fun. A lot of great seminars going on, over nine martial arts tournaments, 50 seminars throughout the course of three days, the Hall of Honors, which is going to be on Saturday night with numerous martial arts celebrities. It's an incredible experience. So I'm Joe Rebello, Kenpo Joe, this is Kim Hollywood, a good friend of mine from Facebook and martial arts. And we'll be back with more exciting action here on Kenpo Joe's Facebook page and YouTube.